Ray came with attitude today was uh, the Alakine defense. Uh, a surprise for you, uh, Ray. And by the way, good to see you. Hi. Uh, nice to see you too. Yeah, the Alakine was definitely a big surprise. I mean, he, well, I guess he probably hasn't played classical in a while, but uh, normally I would expect the Nidorf from him. I think he played the Nidorf against me a few times. Right. Um, I think he's also played E5 against me once or twice. And it seems like he also plays the Karakhan these days. So like he had a lot of different options, but I didn't think the Alakine was uh, one of them. You got a lot of space in this game, mm -hmm. uh, and you seem to be very patient with it. Is, is that the strategy? Like, you see the space, let's be cool. Sooner or later, I'm going to get a break and open him up. Yeah, well, I think the position that we had required patience. Basically, I have a s small space advantage. And he has this pawn in e6, and he always wants to play e5. Um, but as long as I can prevent him from playing e5 successfully and also not let him get too much pressure on my d4 pawn, I should be better. So that's more or less what happened in the game. Um, yeah, I, I was surprised when he played rook e8. I thought he was going to play rook f to d8 and put pressure on my d pawn and make me do something with it. And in that position I wasn't sure about. But in the game, he let me play rook d2, double the rooks, and never had to worry about the... Uh, the D pawn, and then um, I, I played B3 here, which is logical. So I'm preparing bishop D3. I assume that if I can exchange the bishops, my advantage increases. Um, the problem was in the game, so he went bishop H7. I, I thought bishop D3 here, but then I, I realized his idea is that he's going to take and play E5. Um, and he has this pin suddenly, and he's also threatening E4, and also he can take on D4. So I still thought knight e4 would be better for me at first. E takes d4, knight takes f6, queen takes f6, and let's say knight takes d4. And I assumed like I, I have the bishop versus knight, and this knight on b6 is always bad, so I'm at least slightly better. The problem was, um, as I thought more, I realized at the end of this line, no. um, yeah, after knight takes d4, knight b4. And now I have <laughs> tactical problems. I give rook d2, then e3 hangs. If rook c3, then the knight takes a2 with a fork. So mm, positionally, I'm probably better, but just tactically, it's not quite working. You know, this point, we, get, we keep seeing this made over and over again. You can evaluate positionally, but the concrete moves have to work. Yeah, so it was a very strange position, because he basically, I don't see what his plan is. Like, if I just do nothing, I don't know what he's going to do. He's just going to wait, I assume. So the problem is I, my only plan that I really saw was to play bishop d3, but he always has this take in e5, and I wasn't sure how to do it. So I played bishop g1 after a lot of thought. The idea was um, the bishop's slightly out of the way there. For example, now let's say he plays a waiting move, uh, bishop g6 or a6, okay. Bishop d3, um, bishop takes, rook takes, e5. So if we do go for this again, knight e4, e takes d4. Um, knight f6, queen f6, now I could play knight takes d4, and uh, my bishop on e3 won't be hanging, my rook also has access to the third rank in case it's uh, attacked, so this would be a bit of a better version for me, but I was ex still, still expecting him just to wait for me to play bishop d3. Instead, knight c8, um, yeah, it was a surprising move. It just didn't feel like the right way to go, and then I think d5 was probably a good move. And after, after I get in d5, it just feels like, uh, uh, just my position feels way more har harmonious than his. Like, I'm at least taking one of his bishops, and I'm, I'm still going to have advantages across the board. So, um, yeah, he went for this very forcing tactical line. King takes, rook takes. Actually, I'm a bit fortunate because this only doesn't work because after king f1, queen d3 is the natural move, which uh, looks like he's about to mate me. And I think the only move here is queen b1 which is uh, easy to miss from a distance. And then I, I keep the material, and I exchange queens, and I should win. Um, nice mate threat on h7 in case he tries to keep queens. <laughs> I didn't even notice that one. like he, he keep it <laughs> in this position. So yeah, somehow tactically, things were working out positionally. Um, I mean, I was definitely better. So he decided to uh, yeah, give up this, which yeah, it has to be technically losing. But um, if he could keep his queens on and keep all his, you know, c7 pawn on the board, 
maybe that was still playable, but it seemed like it was very difficult for him to uh, avoid exchanging queens as well as preventing me from winning um, some material. So I think that was just losing at that point. So he played in the game rook d2, mm -hmm. which was probably a relief, right? Ray, even though you said yeah. queen d3, mm -hmm. he has other moves here as well, right? I mean, yeah. So he has all sorts of rook, rook moves, retreats, rook e5 uh, or rook e6. Uh, right? I just assumed that I'm, I'm winning, but I, of course there is still complications. Let's say because rook, of queen d3 check. Yeah. So right? let's say rook e6, which is very right. natural. So I thought I can always at least put the knight back on d5 to block the queen, mm -hmm. and Hopefully, like, he's not mating me immediately. If he's not, then I assume I'm always going to be at least better. Because, like, if he plays queen h4 or something, I thought I would have something like queen c3, always to protect the third. And, I mean, his queen and rook are active, but these other pieces don't look too threatening yet. So I just assume this should be much better for me. Fair enough. And we thought that you played a really, re this part of the game especially very, very well. I mean... You just you were trying to force the trade of queens, and your technique Definitely. was really excellent, really nice. Ray, this is your what number championship? Uh, I don't remember. Something like 12 or 13, but I'm not sure. Wow. 12 or 13 championship. Uh, your best result has been what? Uh, second. Second? Do you, what year was that? 2015, I was half a point behind Hikaru. Um, last year in the online... Um, championship, I was third behind Jeffrey and Wesley. So those were my two best finishes. Your aspirations having played now, you're a veteran of this event. Now it's gotten even stronger with the addition of a couple of players uh, from overseas. It's got to feel like uh, you got to do something extra special if you're going to win it. Uh, yeah, it's tough. Like, I would think having so many opportunities to play. Uh, I would eventually get one. The problem is the field just gets stronger every year, so <laughs> it actually becomes more difficult as each year passes. Um, yeah, I think for me, I just have to focus on improving. I don't think you really have a chance in general to win this tournament unless you're above 2,700 strength, which it's unclear. Probably I'm not yet. So I think I just have to focus on improving myself and hopefully keep qualifying and I do believe that eventually I will be able to win one. Uh, that's, that's one of my main goals, actually. But it's, uh, yeah, it's incredibly difficult. Indeed. Well, congratulations on winning this game. We look forward to seeing you win some more. Thanks. Congratulations, uh, Ray, indeed. By the way, uh, debutante.